Morning everybody. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at isobars, weather fronts, cyclones and anticyclones and the type of weather that you can expect when you see these on your weather charts. So isobars, I think the best way that you can think of them is think of them as being a little bit like contour lines. So where your contour lines join areas of equal height, your isobars join areas of equal atmospheric pressure. So they are lines on a weather map. They join areas of equal atmospheric pressure and they are measured in millibars. So what we have here is 980 millibars at the centre of this low. And why am I saying it's a low? Because as you go away from it, the measure of atmospheric pressure is getting higher. And here we have a high of 1024 millibars. And how do I know it's a high? Because as you move away from it in lines of atmospheric pressure, it is getting lower, so high down here, low up here. And isobars are drawn in intervals of 4 or 8 millibars. The closer together they are, the stronger the winds in that area. So here with our low we will have swift breezes, not terribly strong, but much stronger than what you would have down here. Now a front, <clears throat> so these are the three types of weather fronts that you need to know about. So we have your cold front in blue with triangles, your warm front in red with semicircles, and an occluded front in purple, it doesn't come up very purple here, but it's purple with your triangles and your semicircles. So fronts occur when two different air masses meet. So our two different air masses are our cold air mass or our cool air mass and our warm air mass. So first of all our warm fronts. So what are they? So it's shown on the map as a solid red line with red semicircles. So if you see that, if you're asked what that is, that is a warm front. And as you can see here, you have warmer air moving in over colder air. And this is your diagram showing what happens at a warm front. Your warm air comes in and warm air rises over the cold air. So warm fronts are formed when warm air rises over a mass of cold air. As warm air rises, it lifts into areas of lower pressure and it expands, it cools and it condenses. So as the, just think of it a little bit like when you breathe on a window, that as the warm air moves over the cool air, it condenses and that gives you wide, flat sheets of cloud and gentle rain. Your cold fronts. So this is what it looks like. You have your blue line with your blue triangles and you have cold air moving in over or under warm air. So a cold front is shown on the weather map as a solid blue line with blue triangles. And it happens as your cold air moves in under your warm air. And a cold front occurs where cold air mass replaces a warm air mass. The cold air follows the warm air and gradually moves underneath it, pushing the warm air upwards. 
and when the warm air is pushed upwards it will rain heavily. It's because it condenses quickly as it rises and moisture in the air condenses forming rain clouds. And as the cold air passes, the clouds roll on it and the air temperature gets a little bit colder. An occluded front. So this is your occluded front up here. And you can already guess that because there is a mixture of your blue triangles and your red semicircles giving you purple colour, you're going to have mixed or changeable weather. So on a weather map, an occluded front is represented by semicircles and triangles. Sometimes the triangles are blue and, so, and the semicircles red, but more often now they're shown as this purple front. So you can see here in the diagram that there's a lot going on with your occluded front. So we have our cold air coming in, we have warm air rising, we have cold air moving on. So there's just, there's a lot going on. Occluded fronts occur at the point where a cold front overtakes a warm front or the other way around. And occluded fronts give changeable weather conditions. So that's as much as you need to know about it really. So changeable weather here. Now, uh, these are a little bit more important. So our anticyclones or our high pressure systems, you'll see them as a H on a weather map. So we have one here over the Ireland and UK with a high pressure of 1037 millibars. And you can see straight away that the contour, not the contour lines, the isobars on the map are quite far apart. So it's going to be very calm very low breezes. Okay, so as air cools it descends and it cannot hold moisture. So think of it cooling and it's coming down and it's pressing down which gives you the higher pressure. It exerts high atmospheric pressure and winds blow in a clockwise direction. So clockwise being the direction that the hand moves on the clock. So winds will blow in this direction. And isobars are far apart, so there will be light wind. And what kind of weather can you accept, expect during anticyclones? So this is a satellite image of an anticyclone, and if you look at it, you can see there is an awful lot of very clear skies here. So what kind of weather do you think would happen? You would get clear skies and cold nights in winter, so lovely frosty crisp weather, and dry weather. In summer you would get clear skies and you would get possibly cold nights again, but it would be nice and warm and sunny during the daytime. Now our depressions are low pressure systems. So if somebody is depressed, you might say that they feel a little bit low. So that might be your way of remembering that a depression is your low pressure system and an anticyclone is your high pressure system. Your low pressure system is re represented with an L on the map. So we have a low pressure system here with an occluded front around it. And you can see that the isobars are quite close together, so there is going to be strong winds here. So um, with your low pressure systems, warm air rises. We also know that warm air holds more moisture. So as air ascends, as it goes upwards, as any of us go upwards in the atmosphere, the temperature begins to fall and low atmospheric pressure forms under this ascending or rising air because there's less pressure on the ground underneath it or not on the sea underneath it. Wind blows in an anti-clockwise direction so that means it blows in the opposite direction that the hands of a clock move in. And isobars are close together so that means that we are going to get strong winds here around this 
depression or low pressure system. So weather during depressions, we have a satellite image. You can see that there's a lot of cloud here and we know what cloud brings. So during depressions, we get cloudy skies and we get wet weather. So we're quite used to that and the pressure is low. So if you have a big storm heading in towards, we'll say Bantry Bay, and there's a very low pressure system, they might be worried about flooding. One, because there will be a lot of rain, but two, because if the pressure is quite low, the sea actually is able to rise up higher than it usually would. So it's one of the things that might help you remember again about your depressions and your low pressure, that the this pressure will, if it's low enough, you can see the sea level actually rise because of it. Okay, so guys, that's as much as I want to do with this to, with you today. I want you to concentrate on trying to understand all of this new information and please use the satellite images and the photos of the weather um, maps, the weather charts to try and help you understand it.